Time for another board game review, and this time we have the game Dairyman. Uh, this was sent to me by Tasty Minstrel Games, and it's designed by Chifan Chen. Moo! 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 Milk a cow, produce some milk. You are a dairyman, producing fresh milk every day, working hard to fill the orders of the farm owner. But beware, if your milk spoils, an entire day's work will go down the drain. Or maybe you can turn milk into cheese or ice cream, increasing their value and prevent them from spoiling. Can you become the best dairyman on the farm? And that's pretty much the concept of the game. Let me show you how to play. So in Dairyman, like the description said, you're trying to uh, make milk or uh, produce milk and also make ice cream and cheese to preserve that milk and get more points. You take eight dice, including one yellow cheese dice, and you roll them. Then what you do is you lock a set of dice, and they can be two or three dice of any color, but the total value has to be 10. So looking at this roll, we could do, okay, four, uh, four and two, that would make 10. You lock this set of 10 on the first barn, and then you have a choice. If you have remaining dice, you can either roll again or stop. One clarification here, you can actually lock multiple sets of 10 on one barn before re-rolling onto the next phase. That is an option. So you could lock two sets of 10 on the first barn, then re-roll and lock sets on the second barn. Now there's risk involved because if you re-roll and can't make a 10, then you lose everything. But in this case, you're lucky. So you can actually lock another set of 10 and you can lock that set on barn number two. Now, if you get to the third re-roll, you gain freeze tokens each time you re-roll. Freeze tokens, I'll explain in a second, but these are basically um, tokens you can use to uh, either freeze dice or make uh, milk into ice cream. Before each re-roll, you can use any number of freeze tokens to prevent one dice each from rolling one. So if you like the number on the dice, you can use these to freeze them. Now, anytime you've locked a set, if you choose to stop re-rolling, what you do is you add up the total points you got and use them to claim milk tiles. So for, let's say we stopped here. You have two sets of 10, that's 20. That means you have 20 uh, points you can use to buy milk. So I'll buy this one. Now, if you ever roll the dice and you can't lock a set of 10, then you have failed to produce milk. What happens then is you take one of these back order tokens and you don't get to claim any milk tiles that turn. There's a different number of back order tokens depending on the number of players in the game. And if the last one is ever taken, then the player with the most of these tokens actually loses their milk tile with the highest value. Um, after that, the back order tokens are returned to the pile. However, if you manage to turn your milk into ice cream or cheese, then they are protected from discarding. Either way, whether you claim tiles or fail to produce milk, your turn is done. You pass all eight dairy dice to the next player, and then you refill the orders here. At any time, if you cannot fill it up to three tiles here, then the game is over. And Sophie loves playing with dice. Sophie, I am trying to do a video right now. Now, some tiles have a flip requirement in the upper right corner. This one has a yellow dice of three. This one has a freeze token. So let's say I have these two in my possession. I can use a freeze token to flip this over and make it into ice cream. That way it um, uh, stays protected from the discarding. And also when you flip an ice cream, you get an ability you get to use immediately. This ability lets you reroll all twos um, that you've rolled. Or if on your turn you roll a yellow three, you can use that dice to turn one of your, turn this tile into cheese. It's worth five more points, but then you can't use that dice in future re-rolls. Now let's talk about the back order tokens. Even though the back order tokens seem bad because they have minus five points, um, they actually have a sort of hidden benefit. Um, whenever you roll the dice for each uh, back order token you have, you get to roll one extra back order dice. We called them devil's dice because they are red, but they are just back order dice. So even though you have a minus five penalty, um, you get to have more dice when you roll. So it's kind of a trade-off. At the end of the game, if you still have these back order tokens, you will lose the points. But theoretically, if people get enough back order tokens, you could end up returning them and not getting penalized. So it's up to you. If you want to uh, take the risk and uh, get some get some extra back order dice. It'll help you make e uh, it'll make it easier for you to make sets in the future. And that's pretty much it. You uh, roll dice, ma match sets of ten, and try to buy as much milk as you can, and uh, freeze it or turn it into cheese. And at the end, after you after you cannot uh, fill the stock up to three, the game is over. Count up your points, and you win. Very simple. I gotta say, for a very simple game, it's very fun. Uh, <clears throat> really fun, clean design. Uh, 
It's simplistic, and, and yet the theme comes through. It does feel like you're, as you're flipping these milk tiles, oh, you, it's satisfying making a little cheese and ice cream. Like, it does feel like it's, you're piling up to the sort of dairy horde. The risk management element is fun. You know, should I keep going and try to get that last, because I, I can get some freeze tokens on that last barn and get some more uh, points to buy some more milk, or should I stop? Um, and it doesn't completely punish you for uh, going risky, because... Uh, the back order dice can be beneficial in their own way, um, but also if you get too many of them, then you're gonna you potentially gonna lose some milk when the when the spoiling happens when everyone takes the back order tokens. So there's a lot of little things going on here. Like it's very simple, just roll and match ten, but um, there's just enough substance to it to make it uh, shine for me. It captures that simplistic, satisfying scoring of kind of a Yahtzee like. Uh, getting tens, getting tens, getting tens, um, but giving it that risk element uh, and management of that risk makes it a lot of fun. So overall, it's a it's a solid little filler game, and the art's cute too. <laughs>